Charlie, you know what is going on here? Right, let's go. This is Charlie Parsons for the stomping ground, powered by Wow Hydrate and live on DAZN. Frank Smith, I find myself at breakfast in London Bridge with you. Um, certainly a bit of a different interview. How are you, sir? I'm very well, mate. I didn't expect to be at breakfast with you this morning, though. No. I Normally didn't. you don't wake up before, like, 8 or 9, do you? No, this was quite a difficult one, actually. From Sirencester as well. From Sirencester, long old. How long did that take you? About two hours. Two whole Dedication hours. Dedication to the cause. Two whole hours. Where have you come from? Brighton. Oh, so you Dedication to the cause. That was an hour and a... Like, from my house, about an hour and a half. Like, it was a struggle, I'll be honest with you. To get up? Oh, no, just everything, just yeah. the journey. It's, like, yeah. it's a long time, isn't it? Um... Gareth, he won't mind us saying, it's 10am uh, and he's on the tequilas. He is. A bit surprised? I mean, it, you know, it's what it is, isn't it? Yeah. Shout out Gareth, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, uh, let's just uh, let's leave that there. I'm not yeah. sure how important it is to this interview. Well, you know us. Um, let's go into it. Dalton Smith signed a new promotional contract off the back of last weekend. Just firstly, how happy are you, everyone involved? Yeah, delighted. Look, you know, we um, we signed an extension with Dalton probably a year and a half ago now. You know, there was a lot of pressure. Everyone wanted to sign him up. They knew what a talent he was. So to get this extension, you know, over the line, we've been working with Sean O'Toole's manager for a while to get it done. And you know, delighted we could get there because, as he showed on Saturday night, he is a huge, huge star in British boxing. Felt really different in the arena on Saturday. It felt like the start of something, you know, although he's 16 bites in, it felt there was an atmosphere in there that could start building something even, you know, very special in Sheffield that we've seen before. Do you feel like almost with the uh, way you've lost that on a first bid to boxer before and maybe he experienced the other side as such and sort of there was a little bit of uh, talk at one point about him potentially going to boxer that because of all of that he's grown with you guys and it's made it more stable he's seen what's on offer elsewhere yeah but I also think you know we've worked hard like we had to prove to him that we were the right place to be as well we've worked hard during that period you know and we love working with someone from start to finish he's been a pleasure to deal with and um you know, look, it, uh, boxing is a, a tough sport where everyone has to look out for themselves. They have to make the best possible deal for themselves. Um, and, you know, he's... Uh he had to look at what was out there and what was what was possible. And I understand that, but I think, as I say, we've now shown that we're the best out there and we're the best person, people to take his career to the next level. Just a reflection on the weekend as a whole, and now looking back at that performance, he was just saying there, um, he expected it to go well, but not necessarily that well. I mean, it was devastating. Um, got a real star coming into the world level in Britain again. Yeah, 100%. You know, I think even he thought, you know, maybe... It, Look, he was always confident in the result, but I think even he thought maybe it would go to points. People haven't done what they did, what uh, Dalton did to Sabeda, you know, to stop him in that kind of fashion. You know, I think it was a brilliant performance, and he probably, yeah, he prob definitely uh, delivered a better performance or a better result than many people expected. You know, a lot of people thought he was going to go in there and lose on Saturday night. There's a lot of people in boxing as well who hoped he would lose on Saturday night for their own selfish reasons. Uh, has there been any more movement on the whole Adam Azeem front? Is, has the belt been vacated? You must have sent a little WhatsApp or... Yeah, I, I actually messaged Ben Shalom before I came in here. He said, I will know in 24 hours. So, I don't know. I don't know. After... You know, weeks ago he said we're not taking the fight. You know, it does. He said we're going to look at other other fights. Um, now he's saying we're going to decide in due course what we're doing. So I, I don't know. I think over the next 24 hours they're going to make their decision. Look, the reality is they wanted him to lose on Saturday night because it would make this whole conversation a lot easier. He didn't do that. He looked unbelievable, and that's going to put them off taking the fight even more. But now they're in a more embarrassing position because they should have done it four weeks ago. Well, I remember when Josh Taylor was a free agent years ago, and one of the reasons that he didn't sign with Matram, and Eddie came out and was quite on it, said all the best, that the 140 stable at Matram isn't what it could be. Now you're in a great position. I mean, you look at, there's so many fights out there for Dalton if he doesn't have that Azeem fight on a world level. And you look at, people have said about Progray, something like that, either bringing him over here, or a big fight over in the States. Yeah, look, I love the... I think Progray's a brilliant fight. You know, I don't think a lot of people would have expected him to take the Zapeda fight, especially after that long out the ring. You know, obviously he had his cuts, was delayed coming back. 
Um, and, you know, it's, I think it surprised a lot of people that he went straight into that fight. You know, we'll, d we'll discuss with the team now. They know where he's at. You know, Grant, his dad, wants him to, to keep building. You know, as we said, taking a step back to fight Adam Azim, although in calibre of, you know, skill set in comparison to other people he could fight, he could keep building and going on up up above the levels. But the Adam, Adam Azim fight is a massive fight. It's a fight we'd love to make. But if we don't do that, the likes of the Pro Grey fight, etc. They're fights that would be great to see. Well, we have breaking news in late last night that the British Boxing Board of Control and UCAD have won their appeal against NAPD, NADP's decision to lift Conor Ben's suspension um, and that the decision was focused heavily on UCAD's inability to rule on VADA tests and did not include any examination of science explaining why clomiphene was found in Ben's system. Currently unclear what the next steps will be. Are you able to elaborate on your end? No, I can't really go into detail. Look, it's an ongoing legal matter that's, that's bound by confidentiality, hence why no one's made any comments in the situation. Um, you know, and as soon as you know, people can talk about it, they will. But no, neither Conor Ben, UCAD, BBFC have made any comment on the situation, so we have to leave it to them. Before, you've almost been a little bit optimistic with it all. Has this been a little bit of a sort of thorn in the side? I mean, when did you sort of get wind that maybe this would be the outcome? No, as I say, there's no more discussion right now on it. Um, you know, it's an ongoing matter that I'm sure as soon as people can talk about it, they will. Okay, do you maybe look at potential fights abroad for Conor? Well, I think right now, you know, as I say, he's not... As he said, he's not suspended, he has no suspension in place. He can, he's able to fight as he's been boxing. You know, he's had two fights in the last uh, six or seven months. Um, but as soon as we can talk about it more, we will. Okay, let's talk about the 5v5. We've had the announcement now. Yeah. Um, what did you order for breakfast? Smoked salmon, scrambled eggs, avocado on sourdough oh, toast. Thank you, yeah. Oh, I've got a big stack on the 5v5? 5v5, yeah, well, weight division. Me breakfast is. Oh, look at that. That doesn't look very marathon training. Mate, you know what? We've absolutely fumbled the bag recently. You know, I've got to run one next week as well. A marathon? In Tunisia. I've got two marathons. In Tunisia? In two weeks. Yeah. Have you, what's the furthest you've ever run? 32k and a marathon's 42. Oh, 32k? Yeah. What pace? Uh, just over five minutes. That's impressive. Didn't mean you had it in the locker. The boy's doing okay, Frank. Um, this is brilliant. Why are all of our interviews the most uncut? Thank you. Hey, Frank's got his breakfast. Breakfast review, please. Yeah, that's avocado, that's scrambled eggs, that's salmon. And that's toast. Five versus five done. Announced two heavyweight divisions: the featherweight division, the middleweight division, and the light heavyweight division. Um, I suppose just firstly, I'm just going to reel off a couple of possibilities. I'm not in it. It's not me. No, I know, you're not in I it. know you tell the heavyweight division gutted. could be potential. Now, aren't you more bridge weight, cruiser weight now? Yeah, but I I'm not. I'm not a fan of bridge weight. I'd rather win a belt at heavyweight if I. Uh, no, like for me personally. I would, no, like, I would rather win a heavyweight belt. Not that I could. No, but if you had the choice. <laughs> if I wasn't, if I had the potential of winning a belt. <laughs> but anyway, um, moving on. Featherweight. Yeah. Um, God, where do we start? I think, well, we're imagining Queensbury will put forward Nick Ball. Ray Ford just won the world title, but he put a tweet out saying he's not fighting on June the 1st. Who else do you look at? I don't know, let's see. You're not oh. going to get any answers out of me. Frank has... Warren was the same. Yeah, yeah, of but course. You, all right, well, you've said for the light know. heavyweight division, well, you've already said this, that no, Craig Richards anything. will be nominated. No, I haven't. Eddie has. Well, I didn't say it, did I? Yeah, but you Craig... just said to me, you've already no, said well, it. No, well, when I say you, I mean the representatives on behalf of Matchroom Boxing. Okay. Well, have he said that? Craig Richards Is will be the man going forward. Right, okay. Didn't um, know that. If the We've Boatsy got quite a few Yard like heavyweights. Fight, yeah, you do. Uh, if the Boatsy Yard fight doesn't happen, is that sort of a clash that you're expecting to land? Don't know, mate. Okay. Very, very coy, not getting anything out of it. Ammo Williams, what did you Hamza expect? Shiraz, that's a start, isn't it? Does he like... I don't know, that'd be, that'd be a great fight if that ever happened. But I don't know. Okay. We've got quite a few middleweights. Well. Happy to have it all announced and over the line, though? Uh, yes, very happy. Glad we got it. Glad we got it all together. I think it's going to be a massive event. You know, obviously, forms part of the Bivol Baturbiev show as well. And uh, 
it's been something that's been called for for a long time. I'm excited for it. Have you already looked at the people you could sign as a wild card potentially? It's got to be up in the air. Yeah, I went on Box Rec yesterday, saw what was out there, and uh, yeah, let's see how we see how we get on. September, they want to uh, stage an event in the UK. When I spoke to Spencer Brown, he sort of said to me um, that it was definitely a possibility. Two weeks, three weeks on, it's really materialised. Um, excited, I believe AJ could be involved as part of that. Yeah, I don't know. Look, I, I think it would be a brilliant event to do something in September in, in, in London. You know, His Excellency obviously spoke about that in the in the video about doing something at Wembley. So yeah, it would be massive to do that. Again, who's on that card? Let's see. Um, but yeah, we, it's something we'd love to make happen and obviously a, a big event for Rio season. Lawrence Akoli uh, is challenging for a world title at Bridge Away. Your thoughts? Yeah, good luck to him. Good luck. You know, I hope a British, another British fighter wins a world championship. Um, you know, he's had a very stop-start career in the last year or so. Um, so good luck. Hope he wins it. Just lastly, we know you're the co-promoter, so it doesn't really affect you too much. But whole Ryan Garcia, Devin Haney thing. Um, where are you at with that? We know that ticket sales ain't amazing, but obviously not really on you guys. Um, do you think maybe the whole Ryan Garcia situation necessarily makes it a little bit difficult to sell? Or what, where's Devin's headspace at? Well, look, Devin's training hard in the gym. I think you know a lot of people have been spending time with Ryan Garcia, you know, around training camp, and say he's in, he's in, a, in great shape and ready to fight. So. Um, you know, I, I think it's a brilliant fight. I think it'll be a massive fight when it comes around. Um, and looking forward to it. He's made it clear that he wants to become a two-time undisputed champion now rather than moving up, staying at £140. Lots of options there. Subrail Matthias, who's just signed, we're expecting an announcement for him in due course. But lots of options there for yourselves in Devon. Yeah, 100%. Look, uh, Subriel's fight we're going to announce very soon for June. Um, that, that'll be great to get him in there, we believe. He's one of the best in the 140 division, and that's a huge fight if we can make it amongst other fights as well in the division. Frank, enjoy your breakfast, Charles mate. Parsons, Thanks enjoy your breakfast, invite. mate. Good luck in the marathons. Bosh. Do it. Yeah, and that one too. <laughs>